Good morning. Happy fourth Sunday of Easter. I'm happy to be here with you all electronically uh, in my backyard. You can hear the, the birds singing there, so it's a you know, nice spring day here. And uh, still another clear day as well, so hopefully it turns out nice. Good day to be quarantined on uh, as days go. And I want to thank you all for uh, keeping that connection going by, uh, you know, by watching Pastor Kim's um, sermons, by keeping up with each other uh, electronically or letters, phone calls, all that. That's pretty cool that you guys have continued to do that because it's really the, the long game that makes the difference. You know, it's one thing to call the first week and then you know, forget it for the next time, but uh, I've gotten emails from uh, from Lisa and from others, and of course, Pastor Kim's continued um, connections there through his devotions and the services that are continuing to go on. So <clears throat> it's all pretty cool that that's uh, uh, still part of it. And that'll mean that whenever we get to go back in, you know, whatever that looks like, uh, I don't know if we have to social distance in the St. Andrew's um, sanctuary. We might have to sit with bubbles around us or something like that. But, uh, you know, I'll sit in a bubble to be with you guys. So that's okay. Um, I wanted to um, start off with uh, uh, a little song one that's familiar to you, and feel free to sing along. <clears throat> a pilgrim was I and a wandering. From the far from my home I did roam. When Jesus the Good Shepherd found me, and now I am on my way home. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and I shall feast at the table set for me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days all the days of my life and uh it used to be in that uh, some hymnal or another um but i remember seeing it in uh, at church school and at myf uh as well but um and i i thought i had one of the myf um song books but it turns out i didn't and the one i had was newer and didn't have it in it so if I didn't get all the words correctly, uh, then I apologize, because that was from, uh, you know, memory from 30 years ago, <laughs> 40, 50 years ago, whenever we sang it in uh, um, MYF, which has been a while. Um, today, the, the reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is about Jesus talking about being the good shepherd and being the gate um, to the sheep pen and how uh, Jesus uh, regulates the going in and going out and that you know who the good shepherd is at, because the sheep know him by name or know his call and that connection we have with Jesus and the psalm reading which you might have guessed um, from the song that I sang, is Psalm 23. And uh, here it is. And you guys don't even need to look it up. You could say it right with me. And I uh, invite you to. But if you need to look it up, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
and you wanted to sing that last part, didn't you? Surely goodness and mercy. That's why I sang. That's why I chose the King James. Um, was from that. Plus, it's uh, familiar to us. So, uh, a couple things today um, about it. I wanted to key in on three words there at the end um, that we were talking about. And um, that was a loud bird. I wanted to talk about that right at the end. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And when I looked that up in Hebrew, it's, and here's your Hebrew lesson today. It's, ach tov v'hesed yir dipuni. Ach tov v'hesed yir dipuni. Yir Dupani is the only, you know, complicated word there. So one more time. Ak, that's surely. Tov is good or goodness. As a matter of fact, if you ever hear somebody say Mazel Tov, it means good luck um, or good fortune. Because Mazel is fortune and Tov, Tov, is good. So good luck is Mazel Tov. And here it's, it's just... In Old Hebrew, it's pronounced tov instead of tov, but it's the same word, T-O-V. So, ak tov, surely good, or goodness, or um, ongoing good, one might think of it as being. Um, and then, vahesed, va is just the, the Hebrew um, way of, of saying and. They just add it to the word itself. So it's, uh, in this case, it's, the word is hesed, and we'll get into that in a sec, but vahesed and then yirdupuni um, shall follow me. And uh, uh, so that's the, the, the phrase that we're going to be talking about, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Um, and the, the, the thing that struck me as I read it was when it talked about uh, goodness, tov, as I mentioned, it's the word for uh, that that they would just use for good. Um, like I said, good luck. So the idea of goodness um, has the 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 idea of ongoing good embedded in it, which we have. Although we use the word goodness for so many other things. Um, that when the psalmist was talking about it, he meant that the good things in life were going to accrue to us. And not only good um, physical things that were going to accrue to us, but that the uh, that uh, moral goodness, God's good, would be a part of our lives as well. That good was going to um, be <clears throat> an ongoing part of, of how we live our lives. And then when it said, surely goodness and mercy, if you have other um, translations of the Bible, get those out. Not right now. Although you can put me on pause because I'm video. So I don't know if you're getting up. Um, I don't know if you're having a cup of coffee, dancing, you know, reading a book while you listen to me drone on, any of those things. Uh, I just imagine that you guys are sitting there, you know, with rapt attention, but uh, you could be skipping about the room, uh, dancing with your chihuahua, like, you know, I do when I watch a video presentation. But the word um, for mercy in the King James, surely goodness and mercy, is the they translate as the word hesed. And if you looked up, if you had a concordance and looked up all of the instances of the word hesed, it, it, it's a, you know, it's one of those um, Hebrew words that sounds like an H, but it sounds like you're coughing in the middle of it. So it looks like hesed, but they would say hesed. And when you look at hesed as... Um, as a noun, 
it's translated as mercy, kindness, loving kindness, and love. All of those are wrapped up in the word chesed. Now, remember that poets were asked to translate the Psalms in the King James. So when they chose surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, they did it partly because um, it flowed better. Surely goodness and kindness, surely goodness and loving kindness, surely goodness and love. All of those could be the meaning of chesed when they were uh, looking at it and they chose mercy. Uh, which is, you know, one way of looking at it. But when you look at the whole dimension of what God had in mind for us, it, mercy from our standpoint is just that you're cutting somebody slack for, uh, you know, so, uh, that they didn't receive some bad thing that they deserved, that it was a mercy that I, you know, ran across the busy street and didn't get run over, um, that the judge shows mercy on the condemned killer and, and sets him free. And we have that, that Jesus does show mercy to us. But, but the psalmist meant more than that. And I think when Jesus alluded to himself being the, uh, the shepherd of the sheep, he meant more than that as well. Because he meant, you know, being a Hebrew speaker, he recognized that Chesed also had the idea, not just of, of uh, loving kindness, but of God's love. Because remember a little while ago, I talked about the fact that, you know, in Greek, they had the, the dimensions of, of love that they had different words for. And in this sense, they had uh, uh, the word chesed, which means love and mercy altogether, that that was a way of alluding to God's love toward us. That there's more to it than just, uh, you know, a feeling of affection. That when God showed love to us, <clears throat> God was um, reaching out to us in mercy, in kindness, but in the self-giving love that is the hallmark of godly love that in Greek they would call agape. And uh, that, that dimension of love, that, that, that sense that God reaches out to us beyond our sinfulness, beyond our, our blindness, beyond our smallness, beyond our, our you know, uh, lack of imagination of how God can work in the world, uh, you know, beyond our own ability to reach out to people in need, beyond all of that. And in mercy and kindness and love, self-giving, self-sacrificing love, that God can uh, go beyond ourselves and and what we would turn away from if we saw it in other people. That God sees all of that and that the mercy and kindness and love is going to be a hallmark, will follow us all the days of our lives. That God's love will be a part of our lives, informing us, freeing us, forgiving us and allowing us to be God's people. So when, when Jesus talked about being the good shepherd, he was talking about being one that would uh, facilitate God's love in our lives and make that difference in who we are and who we can be in God's sight. And the last word, year to puni, um, shall follow me. If you look that up in uh, the Strong's Concordance, you'll notice that almost everywhere else that that word is translated, it's translated as uh, pursue or chase. It's the word when... Uh, you, you know, the battle is almost done and you pursue the rest of the, the people. It's not just, uh, you know, follow along one after the other. It's that uh, you're, you're chasing after. You're sticking with it. You're not letting that person go. That's the idea that God has in mind when he says, 
goodness and chesed will follow you all the days of your life. That there are days when, uh, you know, we feel like it's too much that <laughs> we want to, you know, kick back. There are days when we want to, you know, shut the door and be ourselves. There are people that seek to run away from God. And that God's uh, goodness and loving kindness doesn't say, oh, well, you know, let him go. That when we're God's people, the sheep of his pasture, that when Jesus is our shepherd, God doesn't let us go. That it's not a matter of, oh, well, he's turned away. Uh, that that loving kindness is always there, regardless. That God's love chases us, so to speak, and will never let us go. Now, you know people, and I know people, that were part of church and have turned away from God. God's love doesn't let them go. But they've turned away. They've, they've decided they're, you know, atheists. They've gone off. God's love doesn't let them go. God's love won't let you go. God's love won't let me go. God's love is everlasting. Surely goodness and mercy will follow all God's people all the days of their life. God's love doesn't let us go. Now, what does that look like on Judgment Day? I would love to tell you, and I don't know. But I know that God's promise is that God's love chases us down. And that that chasing down is partly reliant on our accepting of it, and partly it doesn't let us go. And it's always there for us. So, Yer de Puni is the idea that... Uh, God's uh, goodness and love is always going to be present in our life. And the psalmist recognized that there are times when we're stupid enough not to recognize it, when we turn our back to it, when we're selfish enough to, you know, look the other way and go our own direction, when we're short-sighted enough not to see God's love in the world. God's love doesn't let us go. The psalmist knew that there would be times, just like sheep are dumb and they'll wander off into the woods, that we're dumb and we don't recognize God's love in our lives. And I think the psalmist and Jesus, when he said that he was the, the you know, our shepherd, he recognized the same thing about us. He wasn't necessarily calling us stupid, but he was recognizing our uh, inability as humans to fully appreciate God's work in our lives. And that he wanted you and I to know God's goodness and God's love, kindness and mercy doesn't let us go. Never will. So it's more than just, uh, um, the, you know, that God intends good toward us. It's that God chases us down and he's always there for us. He's always there with us. And I, I draw comfort from that because there are times when I don't intend goodness and love toward everybody. There are times when, you know, the, the, uh, there are cracks in my Christian goodness and kindness. God's love is always there for me and you and all the people that we meet. And that's pretty cool that, that God won't let us go in that sense. So, Akhtov Vahesed. Yer de Puni is Jesus' promise as he reiterates himself being the, the good shepherd is his promise that he is there with us all the days of our life regardless of whether we intend it or not the times when we run away the times when we're up and the times when we're down that God's always there Jesus recognized that and wanted to be uh, affirming to us as we continue on our way. Happy fourth Sunday of Easter. Thank you all for uh, your continued connection with um, with the church and with each other. I want to commend you to continue that for however much longer it goes. Seems like it's been a long time already. 
uh, and for as long as we need to to continue to be safe uh, that's okay that's cool I think God's love will be with us individually and corporately and I certainly will enjoy having uh, communion with you guys uh, when the time comes uh, I love you God loves you and uh, thank you all and have a good week bye-bye